Good evening, Temple of Faith. Good evening. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Let us begin Bible study and prayer. Father God, open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits so that we may receive the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's jump right into Bible study. Genesis, the 18th chapter. Genesis, the 18th chapter, verse 1. Genesis, the 18th chapter, verse number 1. Verse number one, like to welcome everybody, give you a chance to jump on in. Right, that gave you a chance to get in there. Okay, Genesis, the 18th chapter, verse number one. Uh, I want to read the verses I'm going to teach. Genesis, New International Version, 18th chapter, verse one. 
The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he heard from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bow low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may wash all, all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. Verse 6. So Abraham heard into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seeds of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice. Tender calf and gave it to a servant who heard to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and calf and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. Remember Sunday morning when I taught uh, upgrade appointment. Now look at this. This time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. 11, Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Verse 13, the Lord, Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is there anything... Too hard for the Lord. I will return next, return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he, meaning God, said, Yes, you did laugh. I want to put two titles on tonight's Bible study. Now, he says, God says, up in um, verse number. God says in verse 10, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. And then I want to look at verse number uh, number uh, 14. Is there anything, is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return at the appointed time. I want to put, very, very rarely do I do this, I want to put two subjects on tonight's scripture. The first title is, your upgrade is on the clock. I need three people to write on the screen. Your upgrade is on the clock. The second title is, Your upgrade is not too hard for God. Woo! Your upgrade is, I need you to put both titles on the screen. Number one, Your upgrade is on the clock. Let's make it personal. My upgrade is on the clock. The second title is, Your upgrade is not too hard for God. I'm going to give you a chance to put that on the screen. All right, I see that, Rachel, your upgrade's on the clock. I see that, Rachel, your upgrade's on the clock. German, my upgrade's on the clock. One of the most difficult times in life 
is what I call the in-between time. The in-between time. That is the time in between God promises you something and it actually happens. The in-between time. Uh, the time in which, the time in between, the interregnum, as the Catholic Church uses interregnum, is that time period between there is a, a dead pope and the election of a new pope, the interregnum. The most difficult time sometimes and the most challenging time in life is the in-between time while we are waiting on God to show up. While, let me see your hand tonight if you found it difficult in certain seasons of your life to wait for God. There are moments, there are times when it is difficult and challenging to wait on God. Good evening, Deaconess Oz. I got your voicemail. Uh, when did you mail it? I'll go to the post office. The, 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 the in-between time can drive you crazy. The in-between time can stress you out. The in-between time can make you lose your faith. The in-between time can shake your faith. The in-between time. So we saw in Sunday's message that God told uh, Abraham at the point of time, I'm going to come back next year. What God has to do for your benefit and for my benefit from time to time is to reiterate his promise. Woo! God has to come in and check in with you and check in with me to let me know that everything's going to be all right. Oh, by the way, Happy 111th birthday to my grandmother. I did three tributes to Miss Bessie Mae Hayes today on uh, Facebook. Three tributes to her. Has she been alive? 111 years. Don't y'all go play 111 in Cash 3 tomorrow, Kimberly, Miles, Cameron, Uncle John. So, 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 so God has to come to reassure us. God has to come to reaffirm. God has to come to reestablish, to let us know it's going to be all right. So now we come to this 18th chapter of Genesis. God makes a theophany, theos, theos, Greek word for God, ophany, appearance. God comes with in the cloak with three angels. God is in the midst of angels, so God takes on the appearance of an angel if you look at the text in a literal sense. So, so it says here in verse number one, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, where he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. You have to understand, it's hot. When did look, look, God shows up on a hot summer day, a hot spring day? Notice where they are. They're in the trees of Mamre. Now, trees represent life. So God comes to announce in Abraham's life, you're about to have a new life. Kimberly, you're about to have a new life. Rachel, you're about to have a new life. Gabriel Cloud, you're about to have a new life. German, are you dealing with new life? Deborah, new life. So look at what he says. In the tent. They didn't have houses. See, you, you really have to go back in antiquity in the Old Testament and New Testament times. Houses were a rarity. So they were living in a tent. Abraham was really a nomad. He lived from tent to tent. Think of a tent today as a trailer back then. You just uproot and move wherever you're going to move. So Abram, Abraham and Sarah, they lived in a tent, a private quarters in the tent. The servants lived in tents. Okay, God appeared. God has to show up in your life and my life to reaffirm what he has promised. God will give you signs. I asked God for a sign about my retirement. He gave me a sign in. Thank you, uh, uh, Deacon. Asaf. God gave me a sign when I was out the country. God gave me three signs in the last 48 hours. So God has to come in and God has to reconfirm for you. Confirm. I need three people to write on the screen confirmation, divine confirmation, divine confirmation. God can confirm through an email. God can confirm through your friend, your neighbor, a tweet, a text. Okay, Deacon Freddie Darty, how you doing? So, so verse two, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing by. When he saw them, he heard to the entrance to meet them and bowed to the ground. He knew these were heavenly visitors. God can appear in many forms. God comes in many ways. So God is cloaked and um, locked in with the three angels. He, so Abraham in verse four, uh, verse three, he said, if I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. This is where the hymn was born, y'all. Uh, Genesis 13 and three, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Miss Doris' book at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Baltimore where I grew up, she could sing that old hymn, do not pass me by. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Abraham says, if I found favor, do not pass me by. 
I don't know where you're going. I don't know where you came from, Lord, but do not pass me by. You got to ask the Lord tonight, Spencer Dottrell. Don't, Lord, don't pass me by. Deacon Darty, you got to ask him, don't pass me by. German, ask him, don't pass me by. Rachel up in North Carolina, Lord, do not pass me by. Deacon S. Odyssey in Elberton, Georgia, Lord, do not pass me by. He said, if I found favor, favor means if I'm doing something right, if I'm in your will, woo -hoo. Favor means if I'm in your will, if I'm doing something right, let the blessing fall on me. Favor is a blessing you cannot buy at Walmart. Favor is a blessing you cannot buy at Macy's Men's Store, my favorite store. Macy's, uh, uh, favor is not a something you can buy on Amazon, Will Jackson, my favorite online uh, shopping store. Will Jackson is my favorite drum of all time. He says in Genesis 18 and 3, if I've found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass me by. God, I'm imperfect, but do not pass me by. Lord, I slip and I slide and I fall sometimes. Do not pass me by. In my sins, do not pass me by. When I lose my temper, do not pass me by. When I'm not always faithful and I have flaws and foolishness, do not Pass me by. Three people, I need to do an attention check. Attention check. Three people who are paying attention. Right on the screen, Lord, please do not pass me by. Three people right on the screen, Lord, please do not pass me by. Abraham says, Lord, I don't know where you're going. I don't know where you come from. But this one thing I do know, do not pass me by. While on others, thou art calling. Lord, do not pass me by. Verse number four, let a little water be brought and then wash your feet and rest under this tree. It was Old Testament uh, hospitality that when visitors came, you would wash their feet and then you would also prepare them a meal. So Abraham has a very, a calf prepared. They have meat, they have vegetables. They got mac and cheese. They got collard greens. They got barbecue chicken. Woo! They got corn. Under my grandmother on her 111th birthday day, they got cornbread, they got a whole cake, they got peach cobbler. They, he rolls out the car. Make sure that you deal in hospitality. Make sure you bless others. Make sure you bless others. Make sure you deal in hospitality. Be kind to others. Sometimes God wants to test your hospitality before he gives you your next blessing. Now, don't let people play you. Don't let people make a fool out of you, but be hospitable. To whom much is given, much is required. It is more blessed to give than to receive. You give, God's going to give back. He might not give back in the same way you gave. He'll give back bigger. Somebody write on the screen, bigger back. B-I-G-G-E-R-B-A-C-K. Bigger back. So they, they prepared, verse 7, they prepared, tend the calf, gave it to the servant. He heard to prepare it. They brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set before them. While they ate, he stood near them under the tree. He gave them their space. Quit running up into people's space and quit allowing people to get in your space. Give me my space back. Three people right on the screen. Give me my space back. Don't crowd people. Don't bunch up people. Yeah, I, Spence, I didn't know Miss Dar's book was your cousin. Nobody could sing "Pass Me By" like "Do Not Pass Me By" like her. I can hear her echoing across the eons and the decades. Do, save it while on others thou art calling do not pass me by bigger back bigger back so just give me my space Keep, everybody doesn't need to be in your space everybody doesn't deserve to be in your space some of your hurt has been the result of you allowing the wrong people in your space and place Re Maxine Water was famous for saying to the Republicans a few years ago I, Mr. Chairman I reclaim my time I don't know who I'm talking to tonight but reclaim your space ouch reclaim your space Reclaim it, reclaim it, reclaim it, reclaim your space, reclaim it. Reclaim it, reclaim it. So look at this. Look at this. Now, verse 9, God gets down to business. Woo! Verse 9, God gets down to business. Turn your Bible, Genesis 18 and 9. God always gets down to business. Somebody right on the screen, first thing first. When Dr. Hamilton installed me in May of 19, June of 1988 at the St. John Baptist Church in Langley, South Carolina, 
The title of his installation sermon was from the book of Ezra, E-Z-R-A in the Old Testament. It was called First Things First. Somebody type on the screen, First Things First. Some people are miserable because they don't put first things first. Stop putting other people first and never yourself. Stop letting other people pimp, play, and fillet you and never put yourself first. Self-investment is the best investment. Oh, let me say that again. Self-investment is the best investment. First things first. Learn how to prioritize in your life. What's most important in your life? Learn how to compartmentalize your life. Compartmentalize means to put things in the proper box, to put them in the proper perspective. First things first. Plan can't be first, y'all. Business first. Somebody type on the screen, business first. Somebody light that screen up tonight. Business first. Business first. Business. You know, we say business. Business first. Business. Look at this. Verse 9. So God gets down to business. First things first. Genesis 18 and 9. God says, where is your wife Sarah? They ask him. God is speaking with the two other two angels here. Where is your wife Sarah? They're in the tent, he said. God knew where she was. He's just asking a question. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. God speaking through the angel says, I'm coming back next year. What's the title of the Bible study tonight? Your upgrade is on the clock. Your upgrade is on the clock. God says, next time, this, what did I say Sunday morning? The appointed time. Now God says, the, about this time next year, I'm coming back and your wife will have a son. Woo! Some of y'all are impatient. But by this time next year, you're going to be in a better position. By this time next month, you're going to be in a better position. By this time in three months, you're going to be in a better position. By this time in six months, you'll be in a better position. By this time in seven months, seven weeks, seven days, you'll be in a better position. Don't hurry, God. Don't rush, God. Rush collard greens taste like plastic. Woo! Slow cooked collard greens. Crock pot oxtails. Woo! Come on, come on. Some things God has to slow cook in your life. Somebody type on the screen, God, thank you for slow cooking. God, thank you for slow cooking. God, thank Somebody write on the screen, Lord, thank you for crock pots. Lord, thank you for the crock pot blessing. Lord, thank you for the crock pot, pot blessing. Lord, thank you for the crock pot blessing. God says next year, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Don't give up on God. Next year. Don't give up on your dream. It's going to happen. It's on the clock. Your upgrades on the clock. God says next time, next year. By this time next year, you, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Not your handmaiden, Hagar. She already has Ishmael. But y'all going to have a son. Remember last week, God said, get ready, name the boy Isaac. I came to tell somebody, oh, Rachel, God, thank you for slow cooking and crock pot bless. Man, it's hot in here. Hold on. So, 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 so what happens is, God says by this time next year, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Don't give up on your dream. Your upgrade's on the clock. Don't give up on your hopes. Your upgrade's on the clock. Don't give up on your aspirations. Your upgrade is on the clock. Don't throw in the towel, Freddie. Don't throw in the towel, Deaconess Odyssey. Don't throw in the towel, Rachel, Kimberly, Miss, Mrs. Miles. Kimberly, please update me on your mom's doctor visit. I asked her to call me. I ain't heard from her yet. I guess Luna's still over there. Rachel, I saw Kim's dog again last week. So, so, so understand that God's got your upgrade on the clock. It's on the clock. It's just like in baseball, the batter, one batter is in the box. The other batter is on deck. On deck means he's going to hit, but it ain't his turn yet. Woo! God's got you on deck. Your, woo, 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 woo. Ha, ha, ha. Don't know your upgrades on the clock. Your next blessing is on the clock. Your next job is on the clock. Your next promotion is already on the clock. The next move of God is already on the clock. Surely Caesar tried to tell you 15, 10 years ago, I'm next in line for a blessing. Somebody writing the screen, my turn is coming. My turn is coming. Kimberly, go grab the clock emoji that I use on Facebook to write the title of the sermon. Kimberly, put the, clock, the red clock emoji. I, I, want, I want three people to put the red clock emoji on. Three people. Three people. Put it up. Put it up. Put it up. Get 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 it up, 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 
Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. So, 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 so God comes in. So there's your clock. There you go, Cameron. That's right. Your turn coming, Freddie. There you go, Rachel, with the clock. So, so, so just don't, don't panic. Your stuff is on the clock. Don't panic. Your upgrade's on the clock. Stop cursing. Your upgrade's on the clock. Stop letting the devil play mind games on you. Your upgrade's on the clock. It's coming. It must come to pass. Because Abraham already said, Lord, if I found favor, do not pass me by. God's not going to miss you, Kimberly. God's not going to miss you, uh, Rachel. God's not going to miss you, Alia Deli in Austin. God's not going to miss you, Everton Deaconess Austin. Then, verse, rest of verse 10. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Sarah is eavesdropping. Nobody can eavesdrop like women. Nobody can gossip like Kimberly. <laughs> Just mess with you, Kimberly. She, Sarah is eavesdropping. She's listening in. These tents are not that large anyway, so she, she, she hears them. She hears them. Look at this. Verse 11. Now the writer of Genesis, the Yahweh's writer, the Eloah's writer, the, the, the writer of Genesis tells us in verse 11, Abraham and Sarah were already very old. So, so, so the writer says, look at this, look at this. Verse 11, Abraham and Sarah were already very old. The writer reminds us, biologically, it's impossible for Sarah to have a baby. The writer reminds us, biologically, Sarah is impossible for her to have a baby. I see you, Odyssey. God's not going to miss me. The writer reminds us that physiologically, it is impossible for Sarah to have a baby. The Bible reminds us right here, the writer, that physiologically, physiologically and physically, it is impossible for her to have a baby. Her fallopian tubes have shut down. There is no ovulation in Sarah's body. Done. She's decades past menopause. It, no longer a menstrual cycle. Impossible. So the writer is setting up for you to understand ain't nothing too hard for God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the writer reminds us here in verse number 11. Abraham and Sarah were already old. And comma, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Sarah couldn't have babies. Sarah couldn't have babies. It's a no-no. No possibility in vitro fertilization because it had not occurred. No IVF. It has not occurred. Glory is the word, Freddie. So the writer lets us know, and Paul will write this later in Romans, Sarah's body was good as dead. Oh, somebody write on the screen, dead but not done. I said dead but not done. Dead but not done. <laughs> they wrote your obituary, but they wrote it too early. They, they, they threw in the towel on you, but they threw it in too early. They walked away from you, but they walked away too early. <laughs> Rachel dead, but not done. Woo, woo. Somebody around the screen, a revival is coming. Woo, woo. The only way that Sarah could have a baby, God had to revive her body. Come on, put it on the screen. A revival is coming. A revival is coming. A revival is coming. Rachel, a revival is coming. German, a revival is coming. Verse 12, here it is. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought. After I am worn out. Now worn out in the Hebrew means after my body has shut down. After physiologically and physically it is impossible for me to give birth. After I'm worn out. And my Lord is old. So Abraham possibly cannot have erections. Because she said he is old. 
There is no Viagra. There is no Cialis. So Abraham can't even take nothing if he can't have an erection. She said, will I now have this pleasure? Oh, oh, oh. She says, how is this going to happen? How am I going to have the pleasure? So she is questioning God. Don't y'all get mad at Sarah. I have questioned God. You have questioned God. I have questioned God. You have questioned God. We were taught erroneously that you're not supposed to question God. The whole book of Job is about Job questioning God. The issue is not to question God. The issue is can you bear his answer? Look at this, look at this, look at this. After I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Sarah says impossible. Kim, one of Kim's favorite words before COVID was negative. Kim, remember when you used to say negative? Negative. Sarah said negative. Sarah said impossible. Sarah said ain't going down like that. Sarah said ain't going to happen. That's a no-no. Kim, do you remember you used to say negative? Yeah, see, that's why you laughing. So listen to this. Listen, listen to this. Verse 13. Then the Lord said to Abraham. Now, this ain't the angel now. This God talking directly. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? God hears your laugh. God hears your laughter. God hears my doubt. God hears my question. And God's fine with that. Because God made me so he knows my limitations. God made you so he knows your limitations. Stop beating up on yourself when you question God. Stop beating up on yourself when you struggle with faith. God knows your limitation. God says to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? But look at God. God said, she doesn't believe me. God says, she tried me. My grandma just said, if you don't believe me, try me. Raise your hand if you heard your parents or grandparents say, if you don't believe me, try me. And they look at you like this. You don't believe me, try me. They buck them eyes. You don't believe me, try me. God says, i like for you to put me to the test. Oh, God ain't got no problem, Kimberly, with you putting them to the test. Rachel, God has no problem with you putting them to the test. Deacon and Alistair, Deborah, God has no problem with you putting him to the test. God said, if you don't believe me, step up. If you don't believe me, try me. If you don't believe me, take your best shot. <laughs> Isn't there a song in the church called, Try Jesus, Ain't He All Right? Ooh. 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 Somebody missed a shout. Somebody missed the revelation. Somebody missed a shout. Somebody missed the revelation. Somebody missed a shout. Somebody missed a shout. How many, let me see your hand if you heard that old song, Brother Jim Wright. Brother Jim Wright, are you going to be at chapter meetings Thursday night? Raise your hand if you heard the song, Try Jesus, He's All Right. God, God wants you to try Him. God wants you to te test him. God wants you to test him. God wants you to try him. Look at what God says in verse 13. The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will, you, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Sarah was focusing on old and not the options. <laughs> did I not tell you last week that God doesn't bless based on age? God bless based on availability. I need three people who are paying attention to write on the screen, Lord, I'm available. Three people put on the screen, Lord, I'm available. 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 Make yourself available tonight. Deborah, make yourself available. Aya Deli, make yourself available. Freddie, make yourself available. Dr. Rachel, make yourself available. Uncle John, make yourself available. Miss Louvenia, Miss Janie, make yourself available. August, Dr. Walker, make yourself available. German, make yourself available. She thought that she was old and it was over. <laughs> it ain't never over till God says it's over. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but get your mind ready. Get your mind ready. Get your mind ready for a new chapter in your life. Now remember the first time the Bible study was what tonight? The, the first title of the Bible study tonight 
my upgrade is on the clock. The second title of the Bible study tonight, my upgrade ain't too hard for God. Look at this. Verse number 14. Here's that famous scripture out of the Bible. Verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? King James, is there anything too hard for God? God asked the question. He says to an a a 89-year-old woman and a 99-year-old man, is anything too hard for the Lord? Ooh. God says to a Abraham, who's 99, and, and he knows Sarah is listening, to an 89-year-old Sarah, he asked the question, is there anything too hard for God? Doubting. It ain't too hard for God. Kimmy, that thing you want done so badly, it ain't too hard for God. Rachel, that secret prayer that you've been praying that nobody knows about, it ain't too hard for God. German, it ain't too hard for God. Ida Dell, it ain't too hard for God. Dr. U. Grant Baldwin Jr., it ain't too hard for God. Kimberly Miles Cameron, it ain't too hard for God. Dr. Walker, it ain't too hard for God. You see him rocking that deuce? Uh, I'm rocking that deuce. You Grant, you see that deuce? Deborah, it ain't too hard for God. Somebody needs to know tonight, it's not too, your upgrade's not too hard for God. It's hard for you. It's hard for me. But it ain't too hard for God. Jesus says in the Gospels, it's impossible with man, but it's possible with God. I need somebody to write on the screen tonight. It ain't too hard for God. I want you to spell ain't. A-I-N-T. A-I-N apostrophe T. It ain't too hard for God. That car you want, it ain't too hard for God. That bounce back in your health, it ain't too hard for God. That healing you need in your body, it ain't too hard for God. Y'all looking at a man who was so sick 13 years ago, 30, 20, 2011, yeah, 20, 20, when was I sick? 2013, 13, 20, yeah, I was sick 2011 or 2013. So over a decade ago, I was sick. The pills, the Lyrica, and the gabble pen made me suicidal. But look how God healed me. Look at, I have no limitations. Do you know I became a scuba diver after my illness? Not before, but because it wasn't too hard for God. I became a, a scuba diver after my illness because it ain't too hard for God. It wasn't too hard for God. Oh, somebody ought to shout tonight. Somebody ought to give God. You remember when I was sick, Rachel? Because I think you were about to come to Atlanta when I was sick. That's right, I'm real sick. I would preach and cry. I missed time out of the pulpit. I was suicidal because of the drugs the doctors gave me. Lyrica and gabapentin. They had to treat me with an experimental treatment to shock my uh, nerves in my feet. Like you jump, jump start, uh, you jump start uh, a battery with jumper cables. Dr. Elenoff, Bunny Elenoff, used experimental treatment that had just been approved by the FDA to save me. Experimental treatment. I took 42 injections in my ankles and I, they had to jumpstart me. They had to jumpstart me. It ain't too hard for God. Whatever you facing tonight, it ain't too hard for God. Whatever you facing tonight, it ain't too hard for God. Come on, come on, come on, come on somebody. I need somebody to write on the screen one more time. It ain't too hard for God. Come on, come on, come on. Put it on the screen. It ain't too hard for God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It ain't too hard for God. Come on, put it on the screen. It ain't, come on, I need somebody else. Deacon S. Oz, it ain't too hard for God. Quit putting limitations on God. Quit putting limitations on God. Wherever you got, when, wherever you put, wherever you put, wherever you put a period, God puts a comma. <laughs> Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Wherever you put a period, comma, I want to show y'all. I went on there and found it. September 2013. Look at my feet. Look at this. Look at this. I'm showing you a miracle. I wrote on Facebook September 18, 2013. I want to thank each of you who've been praying for me over the last two months. God led me to the right doctor, Dr. Bunny Elenoff of Georgia Neuropathy Center. Two doctors told me that my condition was permanent. But Dr. Elenoff told me that we will re reverse it. She's a godly doctor. Today I begin the first of the 12 treatments. Look at that. Look at, look at, look at this. Jumper cables on my feet. Jumper cables. Many of you have never seen that picture. 2013, 11 years I've been healed. After my last treatment, here I am with my doctor. Here I am with my doctor, Dr. Elenoff. Dr. Elenoff. Dr. Elenoff. 
There I was. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It ain't too hard for God. 11 years later, I'm healthy. 11 years later, I don't take any of those drugs. Don't need them. Periodically, I feel a little tingling in my toe. That's it. Two doctors told me my condition was permanent. Because the science had not been out there long enough to know that that could be re reversed. I had the worst form of peripheral neuropathy. And they kept trying to figure out how in the heck I got it. Normally you get it from diabetes or gastronomic when a lady has a baby. Or bad back pain that messes up your nerve. My whole chemical balance was screwed up. No surgery. No surgery. Jumper cables on my feet. I got to show you. Jumper cables on my feet. Jumper cables on my feet. So, so God, so God says, "Is there anything too hard for the for the for for the Lord?" Rest of verse fourteen. I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Here it is. What's the first title of the Bible study tonight? Oh, you're paying attention. The first title was my upgrades on the clock. God said, Abraham, don't tell Sarah she's on the clock. Tell Sarah her pregnancy is on the clock. Tell Sarah by this time next year, she's going to be nursing a baby. Tell Sarah by this time next year, she's going to dilate. Tell Sarah by this time next year, she'll be breastfeeding that little boy named Isaac. I came to tell somebody, you're about to dilate. You're about to dilate. You're about to dilate. God's getting ready to fix that thing. God's getting ready to change that thing. God's getting ready to turn that thing around. Ooh. Somebody around the screen, it's time for me to dilate. It's time for me to dilate. That means to expand so you can give birth to what God wants you to have. He said, by this time next year. So now we're back to the first title of the, of the Bible study tonight. My upgrades on the clock. Every blessing you're going to ever need before you go to heaven, it's already been scheduled on the clock. Every breakthrough that you need is already on the clock. <laughs> it's already been scheduled. I just don't know when. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know how. But he knows. As long as God knows, I'll know when it's time for me to know. It's on the clock. Kim and Rachel throw up the red clock emoji. And Sarah will have a son. God is specific. God is specific. Rachel, thank you for spelling dilate right. We see Kimberly's GED is now being manifested. <laughs> Just joking, Kimberly. Look, God has your stuff on the clock. Thank you for that clock emoji, Kimberly. Thank you, Rachel, for the clock emoji. You will have a son, not a daughter, not twins, not triplets. Y'all remember how you say that I want to have twins? I finally came to my senses. Listen, <laughs> thank you, God, for revelation. God is specific. He says, you will have a son. Kimberly, God's got a specific blessing on the clock. Rachel, God has a specific specific blessing on the clock. Freddie Dowdy, God has a specific blessing on the clock. Kimberly, Jarman, Ayodele, Alistair, God has a specific blessing that's on the clock. Verse 15, Sarah was afraid. Sarah was scared. Kimberly, right on the screen, scared, S-K-E-R-D. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. She, she lied. First of all, she laughed at God, and now she's lying to God. Whoa, what a hot mess. The last verse, verse number 15, the last part. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Let me tell somebody tonight. It's okay that Sarah laughed. Because sometimes what God promised you is so good, you can't do nothing but laugh. And then when God gives it to you, you're going to laugh loud. So, so let's marry and merge the two titles of tonight's Bible. So the first title is... The very first title of the Bible said, your upgrade is on the clock. Don't give up. Don't quit. Your stuff is on the clock. The second title of the Bible study is, your upgrade ain't too hard for God. If, it's, if, it's, if it seems impossible, that means it's in God's category, not yours. <laughs> if it's too much for you, then that's, it's just right for God. If it's too big for you, it's the right size for God. If it's too deep to you, it's only shallow to God. If it's too wide for you, it's simply narrow for God. Oh, I need you to understand tonight, your upgrade's on the clock. No demons in hell can block your upgrade. Your, your, your upgrade's not too hard for God. Nothing can stop it from happening. Position yourself. Get your mind ready. Get your body ready. Get your spirit ready so that you can receive from God your upgrade. God, we thank you. 
that tonight in this ancient story from antiquity, Genesis, the 18th chapter, these first 15 verses or 14 verses, we see in these first verses that nothing is too hard for God. We see in these verses that our upgrade is on the clock. We thank you tonight. We position ourselves for the appointed time. It may be next week, next month, tomorrow, next week, next month, tomorrow, six months, five months. I don't know. But one thing I do know, please do not pass me by because it's going to happen. Thank you for your favor tonight. Thank you for your mercy tonight. And thank you for my grandmother who raised me in 1966 all up to her death in 1992 when I was 26. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. God, thank you for every tither. Thank you for every offering. In Jesus' name, amen. There are three ways in which you can give in the Bible study. Don't be caught without giving tonight. If there's any night you're going to give, give tonight. Some of you already like German gave before Bible study. Three ways to give. Number one, cash out. Augustus Ministries. Cash app, Augustus Ministries. Second way you can give, go to the church website, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org, online giving, select PayPal, PayPal. The third way you can give, which Uncle John gives, go to the Giveify app. Our Giveify app is Temple of Faith Bible Church. We thank you. We bless you for your offering tonight. Deaconess, I also thank you because you did something so amazing. I told Deaconess Clayton, you do it all the time. You were not able to watch our Bible study last week. You went back after Bible study, watched our Bible study, and then cash out after the Bible study. It wasn't even live, and you did it. So God bless you for that. Look, I want to thank everybody who gave in the Easter basket and Easter candy offering on last week. I went and bought 50 baskets, and I also bought the candy. I finished the baskets and the candy yesterday in terms of buying them, so... Here's the first, I made a basket to show you where your money went. So here's one of the baskets. They're going to get a chocolate rabbit in the basket. They're going to get these jelly beans, jelly rabbits, jelly rabbits. They're going to get these Reese's carrots. German, I thank me for my grandmother, so thank you. And they get, I used to love these bracelets. Rachel, are you old enough to remember these bracelets? These little candy bracelets, so... I have what you what you gave. If you did not give, please give and put Easter baskets because um, I just made up the difference in what was not collected. But uh, you all gave us. Uh, I'm not. I don't want to embarrass somebody, but you know who gave and you know who didn't give. But thank for those who gave. I was able to get fifty. Rachel, you remember those? I love those. I, what, Rachel, what's that candy store they have? I saw one in. Um, Virginia Beach, and they got one at Atlantic States. It only sells candy. It's real popular with young people. I can't think of the name of it, but they sell those those little bracelets in there because I haven't seen them in a while. I may go back to Walmart and get me some of those bra bracelets. Let me show you all my latest invention. While Bible said was going on, I tried a new recipe in my air fryer. Uh, Italian Parmesan Romano cheese turkey cutlets. Turkey cutlets. So you... Uh, so, Cut turkey breast. I did them in the air fryer. I'm going to show you just a moment. Yeah, it's called sugar something. Uh, 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 are you it's called sugar something, but I can't think of the name of it. This is real simple to make. It is uh, it is Turk. It is Italian Parmesan Romano cheese. Turkey, um, turkey cutlets. So think of a chicken breast. It's like a sliced turkey breast. It's very easy to make. You beat two eggs or sugar factor. That's it, sugar factor. See how team works? Ayodele said sugar. Then Rachel, it clicked in her psyche. Factory, sugar factor. So, and what a bad name too, sugar factor. So what happens is this recipe is very easy to make. You you beat two eggs in a bowl. Put that to the side. You get one, brother Aaron Johnson. You get one, um, you get one cup of Italian bread crumbs, three fourths cu cup of Parmesan and Romano cheese, or just Parmesan, and then you you dip, you dredge, you dredge the turkey cutlets in the eggs, then dip them in the um, the mixture of salt, pepper, or lemon pepper, however you want to season the meat. Uh, you dip that into the, the bread crumb mix, put in the air fryer for 16 minutes. I like mine a little browner, browner. So you can really do it in 12 minutes, but I did it in 16. This is a good recipe 
uh, for you all to share. Thank you for the Bible study tonight. Let me see your hand if the message tonight blessed you. The message had two titles. My upgrade is on the clock. And the second title was my upgrade ain't too hard for God. Hold your hand up if it bless you tonight. Man, I'm going to kill this thing and I'm going to put some A1 steak sauce on it. I'm gonna, what I'm going to have with it is cream spinach and cinnamon apples. Cream spinach and cinnamon apples. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Again, thank you for the street ministry donations. Uh, I, I bought 50 baskets. Uh, they're going to get this. They're going to get a chocolate rabbit. They're going to get this bracelet, and they're going to get uh, a carrot, Reese's carrot, Reese's carrot. So thank you so much. Uh, Friday night, fr Friday morning, 7 a.m., Fresh Friday prayer call. Fresh Friday prayer call. And then no street ministry. Saturday we go back to the street ministry to pass out Easter basket and other goodies. Uh, some people are donating some clothes for me to bring on that day too. Every time we get low in my storage, for the street ministry, God sends people. Lady just had a baby. Said, "Dr. Walker, I'm putting together uh, packages for your street ministry." She said, and "I talked to another couple. They got packages for your street ministry." German and I talked about that. German said it best three years ago. This is a ministry. He never seen a ministry that had no no budget that God has funded now for three years. July will be four years. We're gonna do a big celebration in July. So Friday morning, Friday fresh. Fresh Friday prayer call. Get out tomorrow and enjoy the weather. It's going to be 80 degrees in Atlanta. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, Sunday morning. Join me at 9 a.m. for Super Sunday worship. Super Sunday worship. Who am I going to get to say good night to? Who am I going to get to say adios to? As we say down in Cartagena and Medellin, adios. Or as we say in Rome, Roma, ciao, ciao, ciao. May the Lord help me to understand. That my upgrade's on the clock. And that my upgrade is not too hard for God. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. One from another. Amen. Amen. Who am I going to get to say good? Ah, Ayadele beat Rachel and beat Kimberly. He beat Rachel and Kimberly. Ah, uh, do that. Please do not forget, give your offering tonight. This is a special. I didn't call for a seed, but go ahead and seed it. Kimberly, have a blessed night. Kimberly, text me an update on your mother's. Uh, Rachel, I'm impressed. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches would be good night uh, in, in Spanish. And if you want to say in Spanish, good morning, buenas dias. If you want to say good afternoon before 6 o'clock, that would be buenas tardes. And as Rachel just said, buenas noches, which means good night. Good night. Hey, Rachel, I'm so impressed. Tú eres muy inteligente dentista. Rachel, you're a very intelligent dentist, even though that's really not true. Good night, y'all. Rachel, I'm going to cut it off so you don't have a retort at all. <laughs>